wanted to let you know a little bit about the format and who will be speaking today. Uh, after I do this housekeeping, um, we will have Dr. Richard V. Homan, H-O-M-A-N-M-D. He is the president and provost of Eastern Virginia Medical School and the dean of the School of Medicine. After he concludes an opening statement, he'll turn the podium over to Richard Cullen, George Martin, and Ben Hatch. Richard Cullen, C-U-L-L-E-N, George Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, and Ben Hatch, H-A-T-C-H, all of McGuire Woods. When they complete their overview of the investigation and report, Dr. Homan will return for some brief concluding remarks, and then we'll open this to Q&A. We're anticipating about a 30-minute press conference, so we appreciate your patience. And with that, I would like to introduce Dr. Richard V. Homan, MD, President and Provost of Eastern Virginia Medical School. Thank you and good morning. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to the news conference today. As you know, on February 1st, an abhorrent image that appeared on the governor's Northam's Medical School yearbook page was posted online. That photo's publication in 1984 was a failure of the administrative oversight on the part of EVMS. Its publication was particularly hurtful to the African American community and our academic community. It should never have happened. Within 48 hours of the abhorrent image being posted online, we hired McGuire Woods to conduct an investigation. Their focus was on the EVMS yearbooks and on the past culture of EVMS. We made it clear from the beginning that we wanted the inv investigation to be independent, <coughs> objective, not limited in scope, and transparent with its results. And that's why we are here today. I received the report yesterday at noon. We are here today to share the report contemporaneously with the public. Before I turn over the, to the podium to, Dr., to Mr. Cullen of McGuire Woods, I want to discuss a few brief findings and observations of, a VV, of EVMS. That abhorrent photo represents neither the core values nor the individual or institutional ethos of EVMS. EVMS is an outstanding institution of higher education and professional schools. Notwithstanding, in numerous meetings after the image appeared online and at our February 5th press conference, I apologize on behalf of EVM, EVMS for the pain that photo caused. I apologize again today. Nonetheless, those apologies would be empty without action. Eastern Virginia Medical School is taking sustained and durable steps to improve our diversity and inclusion efforts. Sadly, EVMS is not the only school facing a problematic past. Similar reports and images began appearing in an array of social media posts citing yearbook pages from other institutions of higher education, not just from schools in Virginia and not just schools in the South. On February 1st, a review of 900 publications from 120 schools across the United States was reported in USA Today, which revealed numerous images exhibiting what was termed blatant racism. That's not an excuse, but regrettably a troubling diagnosis of the unconscious bias, conscious bias, and racism that, con that continue in this nation today. Unless we confront this fact, this bias and racism will not abate. Uncomfortable silence only perpetuates these problems. We must engage in direct conversations. Even if they are uncomfortable, and even if they're difficult. I also encourage other institutions of higher education to do the same. Notwithstanding, talking is not enough. You may recall that I empowered a community advisory board for diversity and inclusion to help us learn from this experience. Their work will evaluate our current culture and make recommendations for further, further work and, and improve our future on diversity and inclusion. We look forward to receiving the advisory board's report in the fall, and we'll make that report public when we receive it. Internally, we launched a strategic planning process entitled Advancing Diversity and Health Equity 
for academic and community benefit. It will focus on improving diversity, equity, and inclusion across all of our mission areas of education, ec education, research, clinical care, and administrative processes. This process will include nearly 100 representatives from across the campus, and they will end their work in June and make their recommendations at that time. We have also done much at EVMS to be able to improve the diversity within our campus over the last several years. In, in 2013, we created an Office of Diversity and Inclusion and hired our founding vice president at that time. We implemented a holistic review process for admissions for the medical students to look beyond the MCAT and GPA in order to include components of their background and life experiences. That process resulted in nearly doubling the number of minority medical students in our program over the past six years. We also, concurrent with the diversity in increase within the school, we also had improvement in our national medical licensing examinations exceeding national benchmarks. Our quality has improved and our diversity has improved. We've also implemented unconscious bias training across institutions, and I can obviously share even more examples. But EVMS is, has been a leader and not a follower in this area. It is important to remind everyone that on March 6th, the National Association of Diversity Officers in Higher Education awarded us the Institutional Excellence Award. Only one university each year is selected for this national award. We recognize the irony of the timing. However, EVMS earned this award by demonstrating measurable progress in sustaining innovative diversity and inclusion efforts on our campus. Our work toward a more equitable and inclusive campus is not and has not been reactionary. It has been a focus since 2013 and we will continue to be an area of high priority for us in the years to come. This national recognition is a testament to the hard work of our faculty, students, residents, and staff. The award is further encouragement to work harder and to become a national leader for schools of medicine and health professions in the areas of diversity and inclusion. This work makes us all better clinicians, healers, and citizens. We cannot change the past, but we can refuse to be defined by it. We reflect criti critically upon our past and commit to learning everything possible from it. Today we take another important step in learning those lessons. At this time, I will call on Richard Collin of McGuire Woods to the podium. He will share the results of his law firm's investigation, and after his remarks, I will provide some closing remarks and we'll take questions thereafter. Mr. Collin. Good morning. With me are two of my partners on my left, Ben Hatch, who was the head of the United States Attorney's Office in Norfolk before joining McGuire Woods, and to my right, George Martin, my partner, who was, among other things, the rector of the University of Virginia. Ben Hatch will review the summary conclusions, and then after you hear again from the president, we will come back and answer your questions. Ben. Thank you, Richard. McGuire Woods commenced investigation, as Dr. Homan indicated, closely on the heels of the disclosure of the photograph in early February of this year. Our investigation was completely independent. We determined what witnesses to talk to and what documents to review. We assembled a team uh, that was comprised of several attorneys and paralegals to thoroughly review all facts and documents. That team included, to my left, Richard Cullen, former Virginia Attorney General, former U.S. Attorney, and to my right, George Martin, 
who, among many other things, has served as the rector of the University of Virginia and on the board of visitors of James Madison University and UVA, and several other distinguished attorneys who are also on the report. The time frame of our inquiry was set by us, and we have reached the conclusion of our investigative process. We wish to thank EVMS for its full support and cooperation with our investigation. We enjoyed unfettered access to EVMS personnel and documents throughout our investigation. McGuire Woods' mandate was to conduct an independent factual investigation into the EVMS yearbooks, including the 1984 yearbook, and to examine historically the culture of EVMS with respect to diversity and inclusion. Because Governor Northam claimed publicly on February the 2nd that he had not seen the photograph before, we sought out also to determine if we could who was in that photograph and how it came to be on Governor Northam's personal page in the 1984 EVMS yearbook and whether its placement there could have been the result of an error. Our report is 36 pages. It details our investigative process, the facts that we collected, and our conclusions. In the course of our investigation, we interviewed 52 individuals, some on multiple occasions. Those included the administration, faculty, staff, current students, and alumni of EVMS. We also received the cooperation of Governor Northam in our investigation, and we interviewed him twice. We interviewed Mrs. Northam, the First Lady of Virginia, members of the governor's staff, and other individuals uh, with knowledge of the events in and around February 1st and February 2nd. I will now proceed to summarize our conclusions. First, the culture of EVMS has always been focused on efforts to serve the local community. Consistent with this, EVMS sought to create a diverse and inclusive environment almost from its inception. There was no evidence to indicate EVMS excluded students, but as reflected in some witness interviews, it appears there was often not enough infrastructure or funding to fully support past diversity initiatives. Witnesses reported, however, that this infrastructure and funding support significantly improved in the past five to 10 years. Next, during the past five to 10 years, EVMS has taken meaningful steps to improve and provide consistent support for diversity and inclusion at the school. These steps are reflected in, among other things, improved diversity within the EVMS student body, implementation of diversity-focused initiatives, and the addition of a vice president for diversity and inclusion, as well as inclusion training. Nine former and current students reported to us that they had experienced what in their minds were instances of racial insensitivity from either other classmates faculty, or during clinical rotations. Several of these individuals expressed that those experiences, though, were not indicative of EVMS culture as a whole or were not unique compared to what they had experienced elsewhere in their lives. From, with respect to the yearbooks, from 1976 to 2013, the EVMS yearbooks were published as an almost entirely student-run program with little or no oversight exercised by the EVMS administration. While there was an administration liaison for the yearbook in certain years, we have identified no information that indicates that any faculty or administrators edited or censored student photographs or the general contents of the yearbook. We did review the contents of the yearbooks in detail, and as a result of that, we have identified a number of photographs depicting blackface in the yearbooks, including the photograph that was disclosed on February 1st, 2019, 
that depicts an individual in blackface and another individual in KKK robes that appeared in the 1984 yearbook. The yearbooks repeatedly contained other content that could be <coughs> offensive to women, minorities, certain ethnic groups, and others. These issues or themes recurred over much of the time period in which the yearbooks were published, although we note they were less frequent in the later years of the yearbook's publication. With respect to the photograph on Governor Northam's personal page, depicting an individual in blackface and an individual in KKK robes, we could not conclusively determine the identity of either individual depicted in that photograph. The governor himself has made inconsistent public statements in this regard. No individual that we interviewed has told us from personal knowledge that the governor is in that photograph, and no individual with knowledge has come forward to us to report that the governor is in the photograph. In light of the governor's statement on February 2, 2019, that he had not seen the photograph before, we sought to determine whether there is information that the photograph was placed on his page in error or by any other means that were not at his direction. I will note that our inquiry in this regard was restricted by the passage of time and by the dearth of contemporaneous documentation. While we have identified no information that the photograph was placed on Governor Northam's personal page in error or by any other means not at his direction, we could not conclusively determine the origin of that photograph. Finally, we note that Dr. Homan has announced the creation of the Community Advisory Board to examine the school's present culture and make recommendations. In light of the mandate given to the Community Advisory Board, McGuire Woods focused primarily on diversity and inclusion at EVMS historically. Because of the Community Advisory Board's ongoing work uh, and their specific mandate, McGuire Woods does not make any recommendations within this report. Rather, if directed by EVMS, we will provide information found in our investigation to the Community Advisory Board. Happy to answer any questions. Oh, wait, go back to Dr. Homan. Oh, Dr. Homan, I'm sorry. <coughs> thank you. I, I want to just uh, comment and thank, you, thank McGuire Woods and their staff for their work and their, ex their very thorough report. Uh, the report really is part of our commitment to learn from the past and become a stronger institution in the future. Much of the good work which was done in the past to improve the culture of diversity and inclusion at a relatively young institution ha happened before I arrived in 2013. Since then, we've taken even more steps to improve the culture, to provide an embracing and welcoming uh, environment for students, faculty, and staff. I'm very pleased that we've received national recognition for a lot of the work that our staff and faculty and students have done over the past several years. We will continue to build on this infrastructure to make our school even stronger. I'll close on a, on a medicine, medical metaphor. Uh, when you have an infection and your physician tells you that you need to take the medication for 21 or 14 days, you do not stop when the fever breaks or the symptoms abate because you're likely to have a recurrent infection. And similarly, we are committing ourselves to long-term, durable, and sustaining treatment for providing an opportunity for us to improve the culture of diversity and inclusion here, eliminate racism and bias wherever you find it and wherever it is within our reach. So I thank you for being here, and we will now provide op an opportunity for questions. In your interviews with the governor, did he ever explain to you why, in his own words, he first said that it was him in the picture, and he said it was him, and he was sorry, and then the next day he said, upon further reflection, I have not seen this picture before. And did you believe him? So the report um, has extensive reference to that very 
important point, and I call your attention to it and, and hope that you would read it closely. I mean, it, it was an obvious question as to why one statement on the first and another statement on the second. Um, I will answer that in a second, but I want to refer you to his interview, which is attached to the back of the report, and the interview of his chief of staff, uh, which is also attached. Um, as best uh, as he could explain, and what we heard was that while he, from the very first moment on Friday, said, I do not believe this is me in the photograph, he qualified that to a certain extent by saying, I don't think that's me, I don't remember that. And his staff was faced with a dilemma, and that is laid out uh, in the report and in the, in the interviews with the staff. The dilemma was because he wasn't saying 100% as other politicians might have said, um, they said you can either deny it outright or you can apologize for it. Those are your only two choices, Governor. And he told us that the most important thing to him is his honesty and his reputation for honesty. And he decided initially to go with the apology as opposed to the outright denial. That, you will see in the report, was a surprise to many of his staff you'll see a reference in the report where one of his communications people who had been talking to him expected to be writing a denial. But instead, um, the apology was taking place. So the best we can conclude is that he, I, he erred on the side of caution initially um, and immediately regretted not having denied and then in his mind, tried to recant or correct the record the next day. The, I was just going to say, and I'll close, if you, if you read this, the statements on these issues, they'll do a better job in reflecting the actual words than, than I'm doing now. I, he started, and I'm going to use told us in a press conference some time ago that he did submit a couple of photos to the yearbook, one of him in front of a car, the other he said was a more formal photo, but he didn't know where that racist photo were you at all able to differentiate how those different images ended up all on the same page? No. Did the, did the governor ever deviate in his private interviews from what he said publicly? One, that he wasn't <coughs> two men in the picture and that he didn't know where it came from. Right. He remembers the, the car, the cowboy hat, and the other one, but he says he does not remember the, uh, the KKK and the blackface picture. I learned of this through our chief of staff and marketing communications director during the gubernatorial campaign. At that time, I had already made the decision that we were not going to proceed with any further yearbook pictures. Having seen a few in the 2013 yearbook, that created a decision for me where I decided not to, con to continue those. We are a public institution. We receive public funds. We're an institution of higher education. I decided that we, are, we did not want to enter any opportunity to have that photo enter the press or provide a political process that we're dealing with today, frankly. We're apolitical. I focused our work on improving the diversity and inclusion of our institution and improving the academic performance of our, of our students and reputation of EVMS. And I did not feel there was an affirmative duty for me to inform the governor since it was on his page. In retrospect, do you think that was a good idea to, to not make it public at that time? 
I, I would make the same decision uh, uh, now if, that, if we're in the same circumstance. And go through this whole thing. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're apolitical, and I did not feel that that was a necessary disclosure I needed to make. My job was to focus on improving the diversity and inclusion uh, activities and, and priorities that we had in this, in this school, improve the academic performance and the academic reputation of our, our institution. People who are skeptical of that, though, would, might think that you were supporting him and you did not want to embarrass him publicly and you might be hoping that that goes away. What would you say to skeptics who might think that? I would say that I made the decision based on the fact that we're a public institution <coughs> receiving public funds, that we had uh, discontinued the yearbooks previously, an incendiary, an incendiary picture like that had no bearing for my present job at the time and the future I was creating for the institution. Do you know when the first time that EMS, I got it clear from this exactly what year it was, when they first, there was an alumni reunion and one of the, the director of alumni relations identified the photo and toured it. Do you know what year that was? Ben? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'll address that, and I think it's not entirely clear what year it was reported as being during when it was raised up um, prior to Dr. Homan's tenure to the prior president of the university. It was reported as being raised up again during a time when Governor Northam was running for office. He's obviously run for office on several occasions, um, and then it was first discovered by alumni affairs director in relation to a reunion event where they would typically have your books out and then that's how she Would you say this was prior to 2013 which is when as I understand yeah. Dr. Hummel was discontinued? Yes, I think it was. Yes, um, we um, notified the governor's office through his counsel, Jeffrey Bright, yesterday afternoon at about four o'clock of our preliminary conclusions. And then this morning, uh, at about the same time, you all were getting the embargoed copy. We sent them an embargo copy as well, Jeffrey Bright. So it was conclusions and executive summary? Or what, what so, so they got the same thing you got this morning. Yesterday, they got the summary conclusions. Yeah, we're, we are, you know, as confident uh, as investigators typically are. We're, we're, we're trained to be skeptical. We ask probing questions, and, and uh, uh, I think it's fair to say that we took their statements at face value and had no reason not to. The other How offensive you pictures in the yearbook, were, were, the, were the placement of those photos intentional or mistaken? You know? So in, 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 in prior years, um, we have no reason to believe that they were mistaken. How many people refused to talk to you during this investigation? So um, I will answer with regard to um, our following leads with regard to who it might be in the photograph. And uh, we were able to talk to several who we felt were worthy of being interviewed based on our <coughs> investigative process, and one refused to, to talk to us. This might put a finer question. point on that. You had talked to 52 people. How did you determine where to limit the questions or limiting the number of people? And how do you know number 53 might not have been the person who put it out? Yeah. Um, I guess, you, you know, you can always say we could have interviewed one more, two more, three more, but we interviewed. Uh, a uh, very representative sample uh, that we felt was a valid sample. Mr. President, quick question. Um, James Boyd, I went to NAACP in Portsmouth. We had a conversation in February, you and I, and I, and I said to you then, I said for the community to have some trust in what's going to happen here, that we had to make sure that it was independent of even that of Ralph Norton. 
And uh, this is not an issue of uh, politics. This is an issue of a governor of a state in America being seen in a KKK uniform. And he came out and apologized. Now, after political pressure, we can argue whether or not he now wants to say whether it was a mistake or not. But he came out and he admitted to me and to several other people that was him in that photograph. And it sounds like McGuire Woods is the attorney for Ralph as opposed to investigators to try to get to the bottom of what happened. But going back to the independent, did, did EVMS pay McGuire Woods to do this investigation? To, to answer your question, yes, we did. We did pay McGuire Woods. <laughs> it was a independent review. I received the report yesterday at noon for the first time. They had full access to whomever they wanted to speak to, wherever their leads led them to, and developed their own independent conclusions. My focus for this investigation was more focused on the academic culture at the time so that we could ensure that we would not repeat the mistakes of the past administratively as part of EVMS. Notwithstanding that, McGuire Woods had full opportunity and authority to be able to investigate whatever they wanted to do, and they proceeded with the investigation of the photograph in more detail. And I have to refer back to them since they conducted that, and I have to assume that it was done in an objective and uh, thorough fashion. Mr. Buchanan, so this, this, is, this is such an important issue to the state and to the nation for us to get to the bottom. We, we can't make assumptions. And this is why I said to you that it, it needs to be independent. McGuire Woods, if anybody from McGuire Woods, Woods serves on the board of EVM. I do not recall that. I do not know. I have no, no recollection that any from, anyone from McGuire Woods has served on our, on our board. I, I've been here seven years, so I do not know, but I do not recall. Okay, and then we also talked about, the, the, to be quite frank, the NAACP, of course, is our concern with Mr. Cullen being the uh, lead investigator of the investigation because of some political affiliation that he has had. Um, uh, going back for some time with the Attorney General. So now today we have this process again where there is not full confidence that there was a thorough investigation. And now we have individuals up here that are sounds like attorneys for Ralph Northam and saying, oh, well, he can remember that he had a hat on, but he can't remember if he was in a clan uniform and blackface. And then you just said that if you would have done it again, you would not reveal to the community these offensive racist custom. So I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where we'll get into where this is a true investigation where we have an honest look at what's going on. But you just said you would not do it differently. You would not reveal these photos. But now you try, you're saying that there's going to be an independent, thorough investigation that has happened. It's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to make the connection. Let, let me make I, the... I told you in February that, I, yes, that sir. would be here if this, is, if this investigation was conducted like this and this is exactly what I feel will happen. The community can have zero trust in what happened here today. Okay. Well, we, let, let me have. Yeah, I, I'd Martin. like to assure you that this was an objective process. Uh, we were assured by the school at every juncture that they wanted to be transparent. And in fairness, they didn't have to do this. Uh, but they made it clear to us that we had the ability to speak with anyone that we felt necessary and that they would be comfortable with wherever we ended up in terms of our conclusions. So I assure you that from our standpoint, from a professional standpoint, uh, this was an independent investigation, objective in every respect, and that we had the full support of the university in terms of their commitment to being transparent. We have time for two more questions. We're not talking about Sir, for the people, the people, excuse me, for the people of Virginia who, for whatever reason, might not have time tonight to read this full report, uh, what's the top line takeaway? How should they think differently if at all about So, I mean, you've heard the conclusion that we were, we were not able to uh, conclusively determine either person's identity in the picture. That's probably uh, the, top, the top line. I would say we weighed all the evidence, we, and, and based on that, uh, we, can't, we can't identify e either person, but that includes the governor we weren't able to conclude that the governor was in the picture. So I think that would be 
part of the headline as well. Last question. Well, from, the school's perspective, from the school's perspective, was it more important to determine how a photo made it into a yearbook with the PDMS name on it, or was it more important to determine if that was or was not the governor of one of those photos? So I, th I think um, there was not a hierarchy of importance to the questions. The, 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 there were multiple questions and conclusions that you heard Mr. Hatch answer. There was not one that was preeminent. Certainly, the school was not as concerned about who was in the photo than about the situation on campus <coughs> through the years and whether there has been, which we've been able to demonstrate, great improvement with regard to um, the atmosphere and the, and the culture. Yeah. On page 19, uh, footnote 22, you said in our review of the PDMS yearbook, we did identify one occasion in the 1986 yearbook in which appeared the captions on the two faculty photos have been switched. Was that the only mistake? That we could that find, yes. So from 1984 to 2013, that was the only mistake you found? Correct. I don't think we can say it any more clearly than we said it in the report. There's a conflict, right? There's a conflict between what the individual remembers. He says, I remember looking at the yearbook with him, but it wasn't his picture. You can interpret that any way you want. And, and, and the governor saying, I don't remember that happening. Do you feel like the governor was being truthful in that statement? We're, you know, we're, yeah. We're um, taking uh, his statement as face value it's as we are the other persons. 35 years ago, he wasn't the governor then. He was just a student, not even in the same class as that person. So, Mr. Laura. So you know we have to speak through the report, and that's what we've done. And uh, um, I'm repeating a little bit, but but. We weighed all the evidence that we had, and based on that, we cannot conclusively identify either person in the, in the photograph, and that includes Governor Northam. Mr. President, did you ever remove the yearbook from the shelf of the library so people would not be able to see it after you found the picture in the yearbook? I know it was there later. Right. Did you ever remove that book or any of those yearbooks from the page? From the shelves of the library. No, I did not remove those. I, I, I probably would have, in retrospect, placed them in a reserve area that would be out of the public view, but they are public documents, and it was our obligation to keep those as part of our public library that we But that administer. statement right there makes it look like you would, if given the opportunity, protect the governor from people seeing that picture. I would have. Did. I didn't, number one. I would, they would but still be available. They would, would still be available to the public. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're concluding our press conference. We appreciate you being here today. Gentlemen.